Hi, I'm Mike from Summit Mountain Skills. Thanks for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to run through what I typically would carry in my rucksack working as a leader in the mountains. It's one of the things that we'll cover on a mountain leader training course, so I thought today would be really useful to share with you what's in my bag. Lots of things that are going to determine what's in my rucksack. Number of people in my group, time of year, weather conditions on the day, and the train that we're going into. So the contents will differ from day to day. But as a starting point, I thought it'd be really useful to share with you what I would typically carry. Say for instance, I was leading a group of three to four people, say up the top of Snowden. Before I come into my rucksack, I'm gonna have a map and compass. Uh, and my map's been prepared, ready for the area that we're going into. It's very rare that I'll take a big full-size map on the mountain because I'm not going to need all that much map. So I tend to cut my maps down into small bite-sized chunks. I don't go with a, an active map. I just buy a simple paper map, which is quite cost-effective, and I cut it into areas and then I just laminate it with sticky back plastic. That works really well for me. And I've got a full-size compass. So they're ready to go. And they'll more often than not be in my jacket straight from the start. Have a walking pole, find these really useful in the mountains. Whether I'm working or whether I'm, I'm going out for fun, it can mean that when you're tired, it really helps you. And if somebody's got a sprained ankle, uh, it can be super useful as well. So part of my working kit really, as well as my personal kit. Uh, I like the small ones that will fold, fold down quite small. If it is that I'm not using them, it'll pop in my rucksack little bit more easier. Uh, of course, mobile phone. My phone's switched off and that's to save the battery and it's in a waterproof case as well so that's ready to go and I've also got some mapping software on there as well which can be really handy. Uh, and then I've got a hat and gloves uh, just for me, thin pair of gloves and a nice sun hat. Looking at my rucksack, this is a typical sort of 40 litre rucksack and I find that works really well when I'm working in the mountains. It's not overly packed so that if I'm taking things in and out of the bag I've got plenty of room to, to pack it in at the end of the day. Your stuff never seems to go in quite as well at the end of the day. Um, so my rucksack if anything is slightly bigger than I need. With all my rucksacks I like a nice slimline design it just means on windy days I'm not getting buffeted about too much in the wind. But when I pack my bag, I pack it in a similar order all the time, so I know roughly where the kit is that I need in the bag. Up the top half, I'm gonna keep the things that I'm expecting to, to need access to, and in the bottom part of my bag are the things that perhaps I'm hoping not to use. Looking at the top of the rucksack, uh, I've got water bottle for me, kind of half a litre of water. Um, that's at hand so I can access a drink and I've got a bag with my packed lunch. I've got a permanent marker, found that really handy for marking my map. And then for toilet stops, I've got some tissue paper there and also a little hand sanitizer can be really handy. Head torch in case I'm on the hill longer than expected. And they've got fresh batteries in there and I've made sure that this, this has got a little lock function on so it can't accidentally turn on in my rucksack. So I've got a fresh head torch and batteries. And then in the top pocket, I carry what I call my ouch pouch. And then here, I've just got like a, some small first aid items, things to deal with, blisters, an odd cut, I've got tick remover, some aspirin, and some uh, antiseptic wipes. So I just keep those at the top of my bag and there's a pair of disposable rubber gloves in there as well. So that's at the top of my bag. And then I've got a pair of sunglasses. So that all lives in the top pocket. Um, this rucksack is great because it's got an inner top pocket which allows me to organize my stuff uh, a little bit more. So under the lid, I keep things that I think I might need, but don't need immediate access to. So I've got a spare map, just in case anything happens to that one. Uh, and this is a one to 50,000, so this covers a bigger area than my one to 25. 
And I've got a spare full-size compass as well, so if my compass blows away or gets damaged, I can still navigate efficiently on the mountains. So spare map and compass, spare permanent marker, and a waterproof notepad. Really handy if you need to make any notes. Little tiny card in my navigation. I've got a trowel for toilet use. Small sun cream. Mint repellent, obviously depending where you are on the time of year. And some water purification. So if it is that I'm picking up water off the mountains, I can purify that. Some purification systems can leave a bit of a funny taste in the water, so something I carry is some hydro tablets. These are like electrolyte tablets, which are great on a hot day if people are getting dehydrated, uh, but also it's great for flavouring water once you've purified it, so it takes away that horrible taste, so I've got a few of those in there. Always got one of these in my bag, a little hot hands warmer, so if somebody's got a cold hands, can be really good just to boost the morale, just to to slip those inside some nice dry gloves and warm up cold hands. Spare head torch, uh, just in case I'm out a lot longer than expected, or it may be that one of the people I'm out with, their head torch batteries have died, so I've got a small spare head torch. Again, that's got fresh batteries in there as well. Uh, and then a pen knife and a whistle. And the last thing in my top pocket is a GPS. This is kind of my backup system if something goes horribly wrong. I've got a GPS in there. So that's in the top pocket under my lid. Coming into the, the main compartment of the rucksack. I don't use a rucksack liner. What I do do is organize all my kit in dry bags and I try and use the same colors all the time so I know exactly what should be in each bag. Again, when I packed the bag, I'm thinking about the order of things that I'm going to need. Um, so the things I want access to are, are, are hopefully at the top. Uh, I've got another liter of water. So I really like these Nalgene bottles, pretty bomb proof. And then I've got a, a smaller thermos flask with some hot juice in there. So. Depending on the weather, I might have walked in in my waterproofs. Uh, if not, I've got them in a dry bag here. And I've just got a set of waterproof trousers and a waterproof jacket. I use the same colour bags, as I said, so my waterproofs always live in my blue bag. I think of blue as water. So, nice set of medium weight over trousers and a full mountain jacket. It's got a really good hood, so if I'm climbing, that'll come over the helmet. Uh, and then I've got, in my red bag, I've got a nice warm layer for me. So if it is as I go up the mountains, it's getting colder, I've got a nice spare jacket for me. It's important when we're working in the mountains that a kit in our rucksack is, we have to have enough for us, and our clients. So in here, I've got a, a synthetic jacket. So if I get cold, I can pop that on and keep myself nice and warm. And then also for myself, I've got a spare, nice woolly hat. Again, as we got the mountains, it's often a lot colder. Even in the summer, it can be quite chilly. So I've got a woolly hat and a nice pair of warm gloves for me. So that's all my kit. Uh, now I'm kind of coming into stuff that I'm carrying for my clients. I'm really careful before I head out on the hill that I send a comprehensive kit list out with clients. You can't be carrying loads of spares to cover every eventuality. So before we leave, I'll do a kit check and make sure that people have got the kit. So the stuff I'm carrying here is kind of just in case of emergencies or their kit hasn't performed as well as, as they were hoping. So I've got spare hat and gloves for the folks that I'm, I'm leaning up on the mountain. Um, what I carry, I don't carry loads and loads. So I've got spare hat, nice pair of warm gloves, buff, really handy. And I carry a pair of these Daxdine mitts. 
kind of look quite old fashioned, but these are really good at warming cold hands. And they'll keep your hands warm even when they're wet as well, so they're great. Dachstein mitts. I've got a nice warm jacket in here. So should somebody in the group get cold. And uh, I carry a, a size large gilet, so hopefully that should fit most people. So if somebody's getting a bit chilly, I can pop that on and keep them nice and warm. Again, it's synthetic, not down. I personally find that down doesn't perform that well in the UK. The climate's quite damp. And even the new hydrophobic down can kind of get compromised once it gets really wet. And then in my red jack, in my red dry bag, I've got a really, really warm jacket. So if it is that somebody is getting cold, I can pop the gilet on first. And if that's not doing the trick, then I can pop this on and get them nice and toasty. So again, it's another synthetic jacket, but this one's got a hood on it as well. So two warm layers there, as well as a warm layer for myself. Getting into the bottom of my bag now, so kind of the stuff that I'm hoping that I don't get to use. I'll always carry an emergency shelter. Some people call these boffy bags or kissus. It's essentially like a, almost like a tent without a ground, ground sheet. So if it is that we're getting cold and battered by the elements, we can get inside this and get warm. Um, so always carry one of those. This is a four to six. I'll be honest, kind of six people are really cosy, so always look at the kind of smaller number. So that's a, a group shelter. And then I've got a first aid kit in there as well. So. The last thing that's coming out of my bag, and I don't always carry this, it depends where I'm working, but if I'm in mountainous complex terrain, I'll have a 30 meter rope in there, eight millimeter to nine millimeter kind of rope. And that's stowed in the bag, ready to go. Occasionally, if I know the area that I'm working really well, um, I may not carry that. I may carry just a shorter length of rope. If I know there's perhaps just a smaller rocky step to deal with, then I might carry that instead. Just Last bit of kit now, and this tends to live down the, the back of the rucksack where the little hydration bladder is designed to go. In there, I keep some more emergency stuff. So I'll keep a blizzard emergency vest. Uh, these are designed if people are getting hypothermic. I can pop that on there. So I've got a blizzard vest. I also carry a blizzard blanket. Uh, I like these because they're super thin, it takes up no room, really lightweight. So I've got two nice warm insulating layers there. And then I carry one of these small thermal blankets. And that is pretty much what I carry when I'm working in the mountains on a day not too dissimilar to today. Hope you found that useful. Uh, any questions, please fire them over. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed that, think about subscribing to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with our videos that are getting added every week. Uh, and check out our website, Summit Mountain Skills. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you out in the mountains.